Oh, hello. If we haven't met, my name is Gia Graham, and this is my first Q&A on this channel. I received lots of really thoughtful questions from my newsletter subscribers, so in this video, I'll be sharing my answers as I finish up this illustration. Now, I received way more questions than I can answer in just one video, so I'm going to make a little series of Q&A videos so I can get to them all. For today's video, I'll start with the more general questions. I collected the questions anonymously, so I don't have anyone's names, but the first question is, I'd love to know what your story is, how you got into illustration, your journey into teaching, and what percentages make up your income. I'm looking to shift from motion, I'm assuming that means motion graphics, to illustration and teaching, and I'm wanting to diversify my income streams. Well, I've been a working artist in some capacity or another for a little over 20 years, so I have a long meandering career path. I got my degree in graphic design, and I worked as a designer for six years before I left the corporate design world. And that's when I became an independent artist. First, I started designing custom wedding invitations. Then I transitioned that into a collection of wedding stationery, which I sold online. And after doing that for several years, I decided to branch out from the wedding niche and I launched a line of greeting cards and stationery, which I sold wholesale to stores around the country. I retired the stationery line after just two years because my second son was born prematurely and I needed to focus on him full time for a while. And taking that break is what gave me the freedom to start illustrating for fun and to start learning hand lettering. You know, you'd be surprised at how little time there is for creative exploration when you're running a small product-based business. Most of my time was spent on managing wholesale accounts, inventory, product development, and scrambling to meet deadlines. So I rarely had the chance to actually just draw for fun. So anyway, when I was on this break and I had this period of no pressure exploration, I created an Instagram account so I could share my progress as a new illustrator and also to connect with other artists. Now, once I started to get a bit more comfortable with illustration and lettering, I wanted new ways to push myself. And that's when I started my monthly palette play challenge, where I would use the same color palette in all of my art for an entire month and then switch to a new palette for the next month. When I did this, I started getting lots of questions about how I create color palettes and people kept telling me that I should teach a class. At first I was like, nope, no way, there's no way I'm getting on camera to teach a class, but eventually I got out of my own head and I got out of my comfort zone and I made my first Skillshare class. So that's the journey in a nutshell to teaching. And to answer the second part of the question, I've been teaching on Skillshare for three years now. And um, based on last year's numbers, teaching accounted for 62% of my income, commissioned work uh, made up 32%, and art licensing was just 6%. So deciding to teach definitely paid off, but I will say that it took about a year before teaching became a significant part of my income. And I'll be honest and say that becoming a top teacher on Skillshare also really helped. The next two questions are similar, so I can answer them both at once. The first is, do you have kids or other responsibilities that are making your entrepreneurship difficult? And how do you deal with those things? And then someone else asked, between your own business and taking care of your family, how do you balance it? How much sleep do you get? And do you find diet, vitamins, and supplements help keep you going? Well, the answer is yes. I have a husband and two boys who are 10 and 6. So they're still quite dependent on us. And yes, it is difficult to balance it all, even with an active partner who shares the responsibilities. You know, when I think of balance, I think of calmness and serenity. So I wouldn't even call it balancing at all. Let's be real, it's more like juggling plates and I just try my best not to let any of those plates come crashing down on my head on any given day. So how do I manage it? Well, the first thing is being realistic about what I can and cannot do based on the time and energy that I have available. And that means saying no to a lot of things. For example, running another online shop was definitely off the table for me because I know how much time and energy that requires. And I've also learned to say no to projects and opportunities that aren't quite a good fit. You know, there have been years where I've said yes to almost every project that crossed my path and I got really, really burned out. 
So I'm much more careful about that now. And you know, this definitely limits my options as a creative entrepreneur, but it's important for me to be very intentional about what I choose to do and how I choose to spend my time. As far as how much sleep I get, I try to get at least seven hours a night. You know, nine would be better, but that rarely happens. And I do take lots of vitamins and I eat well and I generally try to stay healthy. Another thing is scheduling and routine are very helpful when it comes to managing it all. I make lots of lists. I always start the day with a to-do list so I have some kind of plan for how I'm going to spend my time because I found that if I don't have a list or a loose plan to start with, I spend the day doing a lot of busy work and I don't actually get much accomplished. I use the Google Keep app for lists and notes because I can jot things down on my phone and then easily access all my notes on my iMac when I'm at my desk or even on my iPad. Also, my husband and I share a Google Calendar so we can keep track of all of our various commitments and avoid scheduling conflicts. So yeah, it's definitely a challenge, but those are some of the things I do to try to help manage it all. The next question is, can we have more of your drawing tutorials? Yes, definitely. I plan to share more drawing tutorials here on YouTube. Now they do take a bit of time to plan and edit, so it's not something that I can whip up every week along with all the other stuff I have going on, but I do plan to keep doing them. And you know, if there's something in particular you guys want me to create a tutorial for, let me know in the comments. The next question is, any tips for being on camera as an introvert? So for me, the hardest part was taking that first step. You know, I was rarely ever on camera before I filmed that first Skillshare class. So to get over that hump, I made a couple test run videos just to get comfortable with filming myself. So I just hit record on my phone and started talking to the camera. You know, that first test video I made was four minutes of absolutely cringeworthy rambling with terrible audio and grainy footage, but at least I made the first step. The other thing that helps me is to be really prepared. Some people are great at winging it and I am not one of those people. So I feel less nervous if I have a general plan for what I'm going to say on camera. The other thing is as an introvert, I also know that being on camera is going to drain a lot of my energy. So I'll try to prepare for that as well and make sure that I have some downtime before and after a filming session, whether that's filming a class or you know a YouTube video um, or if I'm on some kind of panel via Zoom or whatever the case may be. I kind of give myself a little bit of a buffer um, beforehand and as well as afterwards to recharge. But the biggest tip I can give you is to take that first step and just do a few trial runs. You know, film some videos that no one will ever see because the more you do it, the easier it will become. This person asked, do you ever get discouraged when money is not coming in or is money always coming in for you? I'm in the beginning stage and I feel great when money is coming in and freak out when it's not. Oh yes, I absolutely get discouraged and freak out when money is not coming in, for sure. The hardest part about being an independent artist or any kind of self-employed person is riding those waves. I've had years where I've made over $100,000 as a self-employed artist, and there was also a transitional year where I barely made $10,000. And that kind of unpredictability can be nerve-wracking. On the financial side, I found a budgeting app to be really helpful. I use YNAB, which stands for You Need a Budget, which helps me budget for business expenses and it helps me make sure that I always have a bit of a buffer in my business account for the slow times. And then on the emotional side, I found it's really helpful to have a plan. If I'm continually planting seeds for my business and working towards a long-term goal, then those slow periods don't feel quite as catastrophic. Also, I'm not gonna lie, having a life partner to share the expenses with is a huge help. Okay, the next question says, Hi, in your opinion, what's the best and fastest way to improve with both lettering and illustration? Well, the best way to improve is to practice often and practice consistently. And this might not be the answer you were hoping for, but there's no fast way to improve. It just takes time. You know, if you practice consistently, you're bound to see improvement over time. 
but the process can't really be rushed. The thing is, if you're genuinely passionate about something and you really enjoy doing it, consistent practice won't feel like a chore. You know, it'll be something that you look forward to. So my advice is to enjoy every phase of your creative journey because you'll always want to improve and you'll always want to grow in your craft. So you might as well enjoy each step along the way rather than trying to rush to get to the next phase. This person asks, how have you managed to stand out as an illustrator without compromising who your individual self is? Well, I think the first thing is not intentionally trying to stand out because that's where the compromising starts to happen. When I made the shift to illustration and lettering, my only goal was to improve my skills. I just focused on creating art that I genuinely enjoyed making. And over time, my style started to emerge. And from there, I just tried to remain consistent. You know, when you're just starting out, it's easy to be distracted by what everyone else is doing, or you see something cool and you want to give that a try too. But what I've found is that it's really hard to stand out if you're constantly following trends or trying to follow someone else's path to success. So the key is to focus on your own journey, figure out what you like to do most and zone in on that thing and stay true to who you are as a person. And that will come through in your art. The next question is, what do you do when you're in a creative rut? I actually often find that creative ruts aren't necessarily about running out of ideas. I usually get into a creative rut if I'm feeling tired or burnt out, or if I've lost my motivation for some reason or another. So rather than trying to force idea generation, I try to figure out what the core issue is. You know, why do I feel this way? Sometimes all it takes is getting some good rest or taking a break from the normal routine to do something a little different. You know, spending time outdoors usually helps if the weather's nice or sometimes zoning out to some good music. Whatever it is, I just try to do something that will reset my mind and my mood and that usually helps. Now this person asks, do you record the whole process when creating art at all times what are the tools and equipment you use? No, actually, I don't always record the entire drawing process because a lot of the times I'm either drawing on the couch or in bed at night. And I also don't always start and finish a piece in one sitting. Um, but I am trying to actually be more intentional about filming the process. So I've recently started setting aside time to film the entire drawing process from start to finish at least once a week. As far as equipment goes, I film with a Canon GX7 Mark II, which is a little point and shoot camera. And I have that mounted to an overhead rig, which is above my drawing table. And actually, now that I think about it, I should do a studio tour so I can show you guys my entire setup. I'll add that to my list, so look out for that one. Now, I had a few questions related to my classes, so I'll group those all together. Um, first up, someone says, Hi Gia, thanks so much for giving us the opportunity to ask you questions. My first question is about your Skillshare classes. I'm struggling with a few things at the moment. My style is generally quite simple and flat, but it needs a bit of dimension and I just can't get it right. I absolutely love your style and thought I'd watch your classes to get some tips, but I wasn't sure what order to take them in for my specific goal right now. Okay, well, if you're looking for tips on how to add dimension to your drawings, you can start with my fun with florals class, because in that one, I show you how to use layers and shading to create dimension in your art. And I also talk through how to use color to bring dimension to your artwork in my color palettes class. So hopefully those will give you a good start. Speaking of color palettes, these next two questions are about color. First question is, what are your top tips for creating color palettes? And then someone else asked, I have a really hard time choosing the color palette for a project, even a simple one. Any tips? Well, whenever I see a photo with colors that really appeal to me, I'll save it to a Pinterest board for inspiration. Then when I'm ready to build a palette, I'll scroll through that Pinterest board and I'll find a photo that I want to use as a starting point. Now, I don't usually end up using exactly the same colors from the image. What I do is I pull several different shades from the photo, then play around with different combinations until I land on a palette that I'm really happy with. 
In the color palette class that I mentioned earlier, I share my exact process for building a palette in this way, so you can check that out to see how I do it. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description for all of my Skillshare classes. The next question is, I'm new to Procreate and I would love to take a beginner's course for learning to hand letter. Do you have a suggestion for this? Yes, I actually have a series of classes on Skillshare on hand lettering in Procreate, specifically for beginners. And the first class teaches the very basics of hand lettering. And then there's a second class with tips and tricks for improving your lettering. Um, there's another one about how to level up your layouts. And um, there's also a class on combining hand lettering with illustration. So yeah, I have a whole series of classes to help you with that. And again, I'll leave a link in the description. Now this next question asks, when will we see a Gia illustrated comic book? <laughs> Well, I'd have to learn how to draw people first. <laughs> you know, I actually really would love to do more story-based illustrations, but I really do need to get a lot more practice with drawing people. And animals too, actually. Drawing people and animals are definitely on my list of goals, so I'm gonna work on it. Okay, one last question for today. If you could stop doing one thing that you have to do now, what would that be and why? meaning newsletters, social media, etc. Well, that's an easy answer, Instagram. I'm definitely finding Instagram less and less enjoyable these days, and I know many visual artists feel the same or kind of in the same boat. Unfortunately, quitting Instagram is not a practical option for my business right now, but if I could eliminate one thing, that would be it. Actually, I'm going to chat more about this in the next Q&A video when I answer all the social media and illustration questions that came in. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And meanwhile, if you have any follow-up questions based on something I've said today, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm pretty much done with this illustration, so I think this is a good place to stop for today. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you'd give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching.